That is what I call sticking the landing. Uh, this is the most amazing episode of Loki I think anyone will have ever seen in a very, very long time, especially for a Marvel product. I'm Mr. Know-It-All, and we right now are gonna break down and review Loki Season 2, Episode 6, Glorious Purpose. Yeah, you got the name right. Oh, you heard what you thought you heard. That's right, Glorious Purpose. It's literally called the exact same name as episode one. This episode was amazing and has solidified, bro, look, you and me, okay? I know you wanna talk about this. I wanna talk about this and I'm excited. So let's geek out together. By the way, comment below. Let me know, dude, talk to me. Tell me exactly what it is that you think about this episode because I'm dying to talk about it as much as I know you are. So, <sighs> the episode starts right where it left off. Loki is in back at the moment when Victor is going to go down into the into the device, walk the game, plank the whole bit, and he begins to let that moment repeat, 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 repeat. And he tries. So his first thought is he asks uh, Obi. He's like, "What? What? What do we? What's what? What happened? Why did we fail? What has to be fixed?" And he goes. You gotta be faster. What could we have done differently? Good question. We took too long. So that's the first thing he works on. Little by little, he begins to learn, and it's sort of a weird kind of, it's not Groundhog Day, but he, uh, finally he gets to a point where he realizes, okay, maybe I need to understand this technology better and be able to get us get this going quicker so that I so that when we have we have what we need sooner. So he has a conversation with Obi at one point and he's like, what would I need to know to do all this? How long would it take to, to how long would it take you to teach me everything I need to know about this? And he goes, centuries. And he's like, okay. And then the words come up on the screen. Centuries later. And it reminded me of that episode of Doctor Who. Uh, where the doctor spends like a billion years in this one place, just dying and dying and dying, learning and getting better and smarter and a whole bit and, until he figures out what's going on. This is exactly that. Loki learns and studies and understands everything to the point that he was able to get there much sooner for Victor to have the thing. They succeed in doing it. Finally. They succeed. Shoot the thing, it goes off, the, thing, the loom starts getting bigger, but then all of a sudden the readings indicate it's it's growing again. The issue is, you how do you wrap up infinity? Because the branches, the timelines will branch at infin infinitely. So how do you then, how do you make the loom, you can't scale the loom infinitely, right? Or so you think. So finally, it gets to a point that Loki comes to this thought process in his own head. He's like, I gotta go earlier. I gotta stop this all from happening at all because there's no way. So he goes back to when Sylvie killed he who remains. And he's he's there long because he keeps trying to do it the long way around. He keeps trying to be like reason with her and talk to her. And so they fight and they fight and this and that. But always it comes down to her saying, uh, over my dead body or some of that effect or whatever, I, I'm gonna kill him or something along those lines. To the point that at one point Loki looks even bored. Like he just knows exactly what her moves are gonna be. And then he gets to a place where he could, he had the ability to kill her, but then he doesn't. This is when he, we have an interesting conversation. It's a conversation between he who remains, and I'm gonna call him the Loki who remains. And they talk. And at first, he's like, he's talking down to, to Loki, and he's like, look, I get it. You've been doing this and this, had the time slipping, the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. Who do you think set that up? Who do you think did this? Who do you think did the other? And he's like, listen, go through this a few thousand times and then we'll have a conversation. And that's when, right before, so he brings her back. She's looking, and that's when Loki, very Matador style, ole, he shows up, he stops time. And what makes you think this is the first time we've had this conversation? At which point, you see he who remains like, okay, let's talk. And they have a conversation a little more in depth talking about what is required. And it all boils down to he has to do the hard thing. And we're all, we all believe watching the show that the hard thing is killing Sylvie. 
He goes, he has a moment with Sylvie uh, at the moment of unraveling, and he's starting to come to terms with some things. Sometimes it's okay to destroy something. If there's a hope that you can replace that thing with something better. And then finally, he shows up when they first open the door things, and he goes down. He says somewhat goodbyes, opens up the chamber door, starts walking the gang, pl gang plank himself because he's ready to unleash Loki Hellfire. As he's going, his clothes are ripping, the same way they did with Mobius, but something else is forming. He's got a, it's this cape cloak scarf thing. His crown appears with the horns. He is Loki in his most triumphant Loki-ness. And it's unbelievable. And I was, tell me how you felt. Seriously, please comment below. Tell me how you felt seeing that moment because that was exciting for me. Not to mention the fact that he's got the outfit. You know the one from the comic books, which is a whole other thing. And they don't, they loosely adapt pieces of that and I'm totally fine. The whole him bringing the branches back together and you see all the branches like a web and it's just, it's, oh. This was a symphony. This was a symphony. And when it reached the end and he became Yggdrasdil, the tree of life, he became his own Norse thing with the multiverse in its, as its branches. Very cool. Very cool. I also love the fact that they name drop uh, they name drop very a variant of He Who Remains. I guess one of them caused a little bit of a ruckus on 616 adjacent realm, but they handled it, so we're all good for now. That's all we can ask for. That's Ant-Man. That's Ant-Man Quantumania. That's what that is. So that's finally confirming that the Kang we saw is that was not the Kang. That was not He Who Remains. The It was strictly, uh, it was a variant of him. And I'm like, okay, as best as I can tell, the TVA's new task is helping to build a stronger multiverse. Their job is to fight and face off with variants of He Who Remains, King the Conqueror, whatever. So yeah, there you go. Now you know. And if knowing's half the battle, you're halfway to being know it all yourself. What's an oral index for this episode? Come on, guys. Do you have to ask? It's 10. This was unbelievable. Uh, Mrs. Know It All, by the way, also gave it a 10. This, it was poetry, it was cinema. There were shots that I don't expect to see in a Marvel series or in a TV series at all that were utter, utter just cinema and film and beautiful. Like, there were these shots where people are talking and they did this like framed up headshot, very much like this, and it's just, and there's, there's, they're talking and they're emoting and you're just like, wow. Right? It's crazy to me. Anyway, so yeah, this is beautiful. Comment below. What did you think of the cinematography? I thought it was brilliant. Listen, if you've ever liked the video, subscribe to the channel. It always helps us grow in the algorithm. So let's people know that you want to be part of the Know It All Nation. Until next time though, I am super excited for what this could mean. Um, be looking for my non-spoiler review of the Marvels, as well as my spoiler review later in the weekend, uh, also of Marvel. So we'll talk again, guys, very soon. Never forget, everyone loves a know-it-all.